There are two types of people in the world of creation, inventors and visionaries. An inventor works with the tools of their time, building something new that fits the age and era they live in. A visionary though plays a very different game. They follow the same process but end up crafting something so ahead of its time, it barely makes sense that it came from their era. Their creations feel borrowed from the future, not built in the past. In this video, we're taking a closer look at 15 of the most amazing ancient inventions that were way ahead of their time. Number 15. Karakuri Tea Dolls Centuries before Japan became known for robotics and mind-bending anime series, they were already building machines that blended precision, craftsmanship, and theater. The Karakuri dolls of the 17th century weren't mass-produced toys or soulless automatons. These were intricate clockwork-powered wooden figures designed to perform small tasks, like delivering a cup of tea. And while they served a purpose, that wasn't really the point. The magic was in how they did it. The dolls would gracefully glide forward, pause, bow, and present tea with a mechanical elegance that stunned onlookers. Their inner mechanisms, completely hidden, only added to their mystique. To those unfamiliar with European clockwork at the time, it was nothing short of sorcery. These weren't just novelties. They were carefully designed to provoke wonder. Takaomi even scaled them up for theatrical performances, where they played roles in moving stage dramas. What made Kurakuri special wasn't their function, it was how seamlessly they merged engineering and art. They didn't just serve tea, they told stories. Number 14. Hero Sips Steam Engine. Well, a long time before factories belched smoke or trains roared across tracks, the basic concept of a steam engine already existed. And it wasn't part of some industrial revolution, it was part of a science experiment in ancient Alexandria. Hero, a Greek engineer and inventor, created something called the A.O. Lipolil. It was a hollow metal sphere with two bent nozzles. When steam was pumped through it, the sphere spun rapidly on its axis, not because of magic, but pure physics. It was powered by boiling water placed beneath or inside the device, which forced steam out and caused rotation. There was no practical application back then, it was seen more as a curious toy than a breakthrough. But what Hero built was the foundation of modern engines. Heat turned into motion. Centuries later, engineers would reach the same conclusion with far more expensive materials and bigger machines. But Hero got there first. With fire, water, and imagination. Sometimes the future isn't built, it's rediscovered. Number 13. The Wine Pouring Robots. 2000 years ago, people weren't just building grand temples and massive monuments, they were also figuring out how to impress guests at a party. In elite circles of ancient Greece and Byzantium, some hosts had robotic wine servants. Yes, actual, real automatons. These machines weren't just for show, they moved, they poured, and they responded to interaction, all without electricity or programming. When a guest placed a cup in one hand of the robot, it triggered a series of internal mechanisms. The other hand would tip a jug of wine and pour, stopping automatically when the cup was full. Once the job was done, the robot would return to its starting position, ready for the next pour. The science behind it involved air pressure, weights, and mechanical levers, but the result felt like magic. These weren't mindless gadgets, they were intricate, artistic machines that blurred the line between function and entertainment. Ancient engineers weren't just smart, they knew how to show off, too. Number 12. The Polybolos. When you think of ancient warfare, catapults and spears usually come to mind, not something that fires like a machine gun. But that's what the Greeks were working on within the 3rd century BCE. The polybolos were more than just a souped-up catapult. It was a repeating ballista, capable of launching multiple bolts in quick succession, without needing to reload manually after every shot. The machine used a system of gears, flat link chains, and a sliding tray to draw and release projectiles rapidly. The designer Dionysius of Alexandria essentially created a mechanical rhythm that allowed for continuous fire, a concept that wouldn't reappear until thousands of years later in modern firearms. 
The polybolos even had a bolt magazine, feeding ammunition into the mechanism with smooth precision. It wasn't just about brute force, it was about rhythm, timing, and efficiency. For its time, it was a masterpiece of military engineering. And for ours it's a reminder that some ideas aren't modern, they're just rediscovered. Number 11 18th Century Sheep Gut Condoms Well, the idea of contraception isn't modern, it's just evolved. Back in the 1700s Britain saw the rise of reusable condoms made from sheep intestines. That's right, actual gut. These weren't mass-produced or discreet. They were sold in select London shops, mostly to upper-class clients who had the time, space, and frankly patience to deal with them. The process wasn't exactly romantic either. Before use, the condoms had to be soaked for hours to make them soft enough to wear. Afterward, they were washed, dried, and carefully folded back into small boxes for future use. For the time it was practical, effective, and surprisingly common among wealthier men who frequented brothels. They planned ahead, not just for safety but to make sure their equipment was ready. It might sound strange now but in an era without modern materials, this was cutting-edge protection. While the thought of reusing a gut-based sheath might kill the mood today, it was once considered responsible behavior and fairly innovative. Number 10. Da Vinci sets war machine. There are ideas that belong to their time, and then there are ideas that simply don't. Leonardo da Vinci's tank is one of those rare designs that feels like it broke through a few centuries early. His sketch showed a bulky armored dome with outward-facing cannons, driven by cranks and human power. It wasn't perfect, the wheel design would have been a nightmare in real terrain, and the crank system was awkward, but that hardly matters. This wasn't about building something ready for battle, it was about shifting the entire idea of warfare. At a time when cavalry still dominated battlefields, da Vinci was thinking about machines. Not just mechanical tools, but enclosed protected firepower that could move and strike. Even without a prototype, his concept hinted at something the world wouldn't actually build until the 20th century. That's the kind of thinking that earns the title visionary. He didn't just see beyond his time, he designed it, and if you doubt then you can google Bing or GPT about him. This guy was a legend. Number 9. The World Sits First Microscope The microscope didn't burst onto the scene with a bang. It started with a father and son in the Netherlands, quietly tinkering with lenses in the late 16th century. Zacharias Janssen, alongside his father Hans, is widely credited with building the first microscope that looked and functioned like the real deal. There were bulkier devices before it, sure, but none with the sharpness or simplicity of Janssen's 1595 creation. His version used a biconvex eyepiece and a plano convex objective lens, and while the magnification wasn't revolutionary by today's standards, it made objects appear ten times larger than the naked eye could see. That might not sound wild now, but back then it was game-changing. It gave scientists and scholars a brand new perspective on the hidden structures of nature. What Johnson built wasn't just an instrument, it was a new way of looking at the world. And from that moment on, small never meant invisible again. Number 8. The Kanats of Ancient Iran Modern plumbing still struggles in places where ancient engineers already figured it out. 3,000 years ago, Iranian builders created kunits, underground water channels that could move clean, drinkable water across miles of dry land. They didn't have pumps or machines, what they had was gravity, determination, and serious engineering skills. The system started at elevated sources like caves, springs, or high rivers. Workers would then carve long, sloping tunnels deep beneath the earth to gently carry that water downhill into towns, farms, and cities. On the surface, the only signs of these underground highways were evenly spaced holes used for ventilation and access during construction. That work wasn't easy. Everything was dug by hand, sometimes through rock, and some of those tunnels stretch over 40 meters. When the channels finally emerged, they transformed barren land into green oases. What's even more impressive is that many kunits still function today without electricity or engines, 
Just brilliant engineering that stood the test of centuries. What do you think about it? Well, let us know. Number 7. The Autoped. The next time you see someone zipping past on an electric scooter, remember that it's not exactly a new idea. Over a hundred years ago, people were already cruising city streets on something called the Autoped. It looked like a child's push scooter with a motor mounted over the front wheel, basic, compact, and surprisingly fast. In 1915, it became briefly popular among postal workers in major cities. Light, quick, and able to hit 35 miles per hour, it cut down their delivery time and added a bit of flair to the job. It wasn't the smoothest ride, and probably not the safest either, but it got the job done. The trend didn't last. By 1921, production stopped for reasons that still aren't entirely clear. But the concept didn't die. Earlier patents for battery-powered scooters date back to the 1890s, and the idea keeps returning in updated forms. So while today's electric scooters might look sleek and modern, the bones of the concept are over a century old. Number 6. Ernest Bazin Sits Roller Ship when Ernest Bazin unveiled his massive roller ship in the 19th century, people didn't know whether to laugh or take notes. It looked like something out of a fantasy novel. A vessel balanced on enormous wheels meant to lift the main hull above water to reduce drag. Bazin believed this design could cut transatlantic travel time in half, and on paper the theory was sound. By raising the ship out of the water, he hoped to reduce friction and increase speed. But the ocean had other plans. The giant wheels weren't built to handle the chaotic resistance of open water, instead of slicing through the waves, they acted like anchors, dragging the ship down. Still, the ambition was undeniable. Bazin didn't fail for lack of vision, he simply ran out of time. He passed away in 1897, before he could refine the design. What's left is not a punchline, but a glimpse into the mind of a man who wasn't afraid to try something no one else dared to. Number 5. Plato Sits Alarm Clock When people think of Plato, they picture deep philosophical debates and ancient wisdom, not the sound of an alarm going off before sunrise. But as strange as it sounds, Plato may have been responsible for inventing the first known alarm clock, he wasn't trying to change the world, just frustrated that his students kept showing up late to lectures. His solution was clever, a water-based device made from a system of vessels and tubes, as water slowly filled the final sealed container, the pressure would build up until it released a sharp, whistling sound, similar to how a kettle behaves when it boils. It didn't need numbers or a dial, the sound alone did the job. It's hard not to admire how practical that is. In a time with no electricity, no gears, and no mechanical timers, Plato still found a way to control time, or at least people's response to it. It's just a little ironic that one of history's greatest minds also gave us our least favorite morning sound. Number 4. Patara Pipes In southern Turkey, near the ruins of Patara, lies a set of ancient sandstone pipes that have stirred up serious debate. They're carved with precision and look like part of an aqueduct system, yet oddly, no Roman records mention them. And that's weird, because Romans loved writing things down. Inscriptions found nearby go into detail about roads, bridges, and settlements, but these pipes, not a single word. Their construction also doesn't match typical Roman engineering styles. That's led some historians to think the Romans may have inherited them from a much earlier culture and simply repurposed what they found. If true, that would make the pipes one of the rare remnants of a completely unknown civilization, one that understood hydraulics long before Rome ever got involved. The absence of documentation might just be the loudest clue. It's as if the pipes are trying to tell their story, but nobody left a voice behind. And so they sit, cut from rock, perfectly aligned, with their origins still lost in the dust. Number 3. Edison Sepp's Electric Pen Edison had more hits than misses, but one of his forgotten inventions ended up creating something no one saw coming. In 1875, Edison designed an electric pen meant for duplicating documents. The concept was straightforward. A needle-like point vibrated rapidly to punch tiny holes through paper and stencil multiple pages at once. 
It worked, but not well enough to catch on commercially. Ten years later the typewriter took over and left Edison's device in the dust. But the story didn't end there. In 1891, New York tattoo artist Samuel F. O'Reilly got his hands on one of Edison's original pens. Instead of writing on paper, he realized it could write on skin, and just like that, the first electric tattoo machine was born. It wasn't a huge leap in design. It was almost the exact same tool. What Edison built for paperwork accidentally turned into the foundation of an art form. Sometimes an invention's success isn't in what it was meant to do, but what someone else decides to do with it. Number 2. The Crog of Monmouth What was uncovered in Monmouth, Wales, wasn't just another dig, it was a full-on reality check for archaeologists. Beneath the soil lay the remains of a four 800-year-old crog, a wooden fort that predates even the pyramids. Built on stilts over a human-made island in what was once a lake, this structure screams early innovation. Whoever designed it understood defense, location strategy, and more impressively, engineering. The whole thing hints that these weren't just primitive tribes, these were boat builders, tacticians, and planners who figured out how to shape their environment to survive and thrive. It challenges the usual narrative that innovation came from the East or South, because clearly, prehistoric Britain had its own blueprint for brilliance. The site itself flips assumptions on their head. It's no longer about what ancient Britons lacked, it's about what they already knew. Long before the Romans showed up, these builders were crafting defensive outposts and navigating waters. This wasn't a backwater society, it was a bold one. Number 1. Visby Lenses The Vikings weren't just conquerors, they were craftspeople. Among the most baffling artifacts from their world are the Visby Lenses, uncovered in graves on Sweden's Gotland Island. These aren't decorative trinkets, they're expertly carved optical lenses with surprisingly low spherical aberration, meaning they were designed with precision to magnify, and they did it centuries before modern optics caught up. Dating between the 11th and 12th centuries, these quartz pieces might have been used for starting fires, enhancing vision, or even crafting early telescopes, though no one knows for sure. The craftsmanship is so advanced that some researchers believe a single artisan may have made them all. After that individual passed, the technique likely vanished with them. Silver mounts found with some lenses might have been added later, suggesting they were treasured long after their function was forgotten. It's a quiet mystery, no dramatic curse, no eerie tomb, just the kind of genius that existed quietly in a time we've underestimated for too long. Well we really hope you've enjoyed this video, if you did please like it, share it and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you soon.